In this video, we learn how to control for possible confounding factors when we calculate the relative risk or the odds ratio by using the mental Hansen method. To understand how the method works, we will use a very simple fictive example. Suppose that we like to know if Swedish people living in Spain have a higher risk to get cancer compared to Swedish people living in Sweden. In this study, one has randomly selected 30,000 Swedish people living in Spain and 30,000 Swedish people living in Sweden and followed these 60,000 people over 20 years. Out of the 30,000 in Spain, 5,032 got cancer, whereas only 2,600 individuals out of the 30,000 in Sweden got cancer. The risk to get cancer during the study time for Swedish people in Spain was 16.8%, whereas the corresponding risk for the ones living in Sweden was only 8.7%. The relative risk is therefore 1.94, which means that the risk to get cancer for Swedish people living in Spain is about twice as high as compared to the ones living in Sweden. If we would calculate a 95% confidence interval for the relative risk, we would see that the relative risk is significantly greater than 1. So, why do Swedish people living in Spain have a significantly higher risk to get cancer? This seems strange. Maybe this is due to a confounding factor. Maybe there is an age difference between the two populations that we study. Most Swedish people moved to Spain after they have retired, which means that most Swedish people living in Spain are elderly people. Let's split the individuals into three different age groups, where we collect the individuals that were younger than 30 years of age at the start of the study in one table, and individuals that were between 30 and 50 in this table and people who were older than 50 years of age in this table. We see that there are quite few Swedish people living in Spain that were younger than 30 years of age. Most Swedish people living in Spain were older than 50 years. In comparison, the Swedish people living in Sweden were evenly distributed over the three different age groups. If we would calculate the risk to get cancer in the different age groups, we see that younger people have a much lower risk to get cancer compared to older people. It is also interesting to see that the risk to get cancer for Swedish people in Spain is about the same as the risk for people in Sweden in the three different age groups. The relative risk values are now around 1 when we split the individuals into the different age groups. The reason why we previously observed a higher risk to get cancer for the ones living in Spain is due to that most Swedish people living in Spain were much older, and older people have a higher risk to get cancer compared to younger people. So, how do we pull these three relative risk values into just one? One way is to calculate the mean of the three values. However, the problem with such a calculation is that we do not account for the fact for the different sample sizes in the three different age groups. For example, the relative risk value for the older individuals was estimated based on more individuals, compared to the relative risk value calculated for the younger individuals. It would therefore make sense to put more weight on this relative risk value, because we are more certain about this value since it is based on the largest sample size. This is exactly what the mental Hansel method does. It pulls the relative risk values by some kind of weighted average. The weights are calculated like this. I represents, in our case, the age groups. For example, if I is equal to 1, we will calculate the weight associated with the relative risk value for the first group, which is the youngest group in our example. This weight is calculated as the product of the value in the element C and the sum of the first row, divided by the total number of people in this group. 
This is how the three different weights are calculated in our example. For example, to calculate the weight for the first group, the group with the youngest people, we multiply the sum of the first row by the value in element C and divide by the total number of individuals in this group. Note that the weight of the last group is much higher than the weights of the other two groups, which means that we will put most weight on this relative risk value when we pool the three values. We will now calculate the pooled relative risk by the mental hensel method, where we plug in the three relative risk values and the corresponding weights, and do the math. I have here used a statistical software tool to calculate the 95% confidence interval for the pooled mental hensel relative risk value. Since this interval includes the value 1, we can conclude that Swedish people living in Spain do not have a significantly higher risk to get cancer compared to people living in Sweden when we control for the age difference between the groups. In the previous example, I used the following formula to calculate the pooled relative risk. I like this formula because it shows the associated weights for the relative risk values. A more common formula you will see is this one. This is how the relative risk values are calculated. And this is how the weights are calculated. If you plug in these formulas into this equation, we'll get this equation, and if we simplify, we'll obtain this equation. We'll now see how to calculate a pool odds ratio with the mental hensel method. Suppose that we have performed a case control study where we have collected 1,200 cancer patients and 1,098 controls. In this study, one wants to investigate if having children is somehow associated with cancer. Since this is a case control study, we here instead calculate the odds ratio as we have discussed in the previous video. If we compute the 95% confidence interval, we see that the odds ratio is significantly greater than 1. However, this result might again be due to an age difference between the two groups. If we split the individuals into three different age groups, and calculate the odds ratios for each group. We see that all these odds ratios are now close to 1. To pool the odds ratios, we use the same formula as we used to pool the relative risk values. The difference is that the weights are calculated in a different way, where the numerator involves the product of the values in the elements B and C. From the video about the odds ratio, we know that this is how the odds ratio is calculated. If we plug in the formulas for the weights and for the odds ratios and simplify, then we will obtain this equation, which is commonly used to calculate the pooled mental hensel odds ratio. Let's try the following formula to calculate the pooled mental hensel odds ratio based on our example data. We first calculate the weights of the three different groups and plug in these into the equation together with the odds ratios and do the math. If you use the software to compute the 95% confidence interval, we will see that this interval includes the value 1, which means that the odds ratio is no longer significantly different from 1 when we control for the age difference within the groups. This shows the importance to adjust for possible confounding variables when we calculate the relative risk or the odds ratio when, for example, the two groups include people of different ages. Note that the mental hensel method required that we converted the numerical variable age into a categorical variable where we divided the individuals into three different age groups. Logistic regression can also be used to estimate odds ratios and at the same time control for other variables. The advantage with logistic regression is that it can include both categorical and numerical variables. This was the end of this video about the mental Hansen method. Thanks for watching.